Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, September 1, 2023. There has been a 54% reduction in the backlog of solid waste disposal complaints since the government's acquisition of 50 garbage trucks which were deployed across the island last year. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement while addressing a town hall on housing and land. It was held at the Harmony Beach Park in Montego Bay Thursday evening. Mr. Holness says prior to the trucks being acquired, the backlog of complaints between March and November 2022 totaled 1,896. Since we have the trucks, about six months now or probably more than six months, the backlog complaints have gone down to 873. In other words, we have cut those complaints by 1,023 complaints. So more persons are benefiting from a better system. The Prime Minister says the government intends to further reduce backlogs island-wide. This will be supported by the acquisition of 50 additional compactors. Thursday's town hall was the second in a series being hosted by the government to engage the public on a range of issues impacting their lives. The government will be working to introduce a new water trucking policy for the country within the next couple months. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, made the announcement during a function at the Forestry Department on Tuesday. He says work on the policy will be done through the Integrated Water Management Council. It's intended to ensure that trucking is clearly structured as an addendum to the national water policy. It's overdue. Trucking hasn't been done efficiently, never has been. And I've seen the impact of inefficient trucking even during my tenure, even though we've worked to correct it. But the policy construct is not, is not there. And then where there is not clear directions, there cannot be clear management decisions. Even as this is being done, the minister says the country's ambition has to be to remove the need for trucking as government works to implement more permanent solutions for all Jamaicans. Farmers have begun receiving assistance under the Ministry of Agriculture's $200 million drought mitigation program. This was disclosed by Portfolio Minister Floyd Green while speaking on the radio program Good Morning Minister aired on Wednesday. $104 million was allocated for trucking water to farmers, with $48 million earmarked to purchase three trucks. $10 million is budgeted to provide irrigation drip kits to some farmers, and other sums are programmed for the provision of mulch, seeds, planting material, fertilizer, and other inputs. Minister Green says one truck has already arrived and should be commissioned into service shortly. Additionally, the ministry is working with farmers to identify areas to harvest rainwater in ponds. The minister says this is especially important for yam planting areas that do not have access to water. The drought has also been affecting vegetable planting and, by extension, market prices. But the minister says recent rainfall and the drought mitigation efforts are helping to relieve that and consumers can expect to see some dissipation of increased prices soon. All air travel passengers entering Jamaica are now required to complete the C-5 immigration form online effective today, September 1. Chief Executive Officer of the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, Andrew Winter, says the digital form will make it easier to process passengers at the airports. When they submit it, when, whether they are being processed by an officer or at a kiosk, the passenger declaration form will be there. So it will just be confirming them and that will certainly speed up the process in terms of their being admitted to the country. Mr. Winter was speaking at a GIS think tank on Wednesday. He says the online form will require the same information as the previous paper-based version. Passengers are also being assured that all personal information shared will be secured. Well, your information is protected. One of the things the agency has a very robust um, cyber security program. And we also ensure that the, the information, what is received by us, is encrypted so that we are able to secure the identity because that was something that we thought of from the inception. Persons can visit enterjamaica.com to access the C5 immigration form. The newly formed Public Passenger Vehicles PPV Steering Committee is to put together a proposal to fine-tune fare adjustments for the transport sector. Transport Minister Daryl Vaz made the disclosure during Wednesday's post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House. 
He revealed that the first steering committee meeting was held two weeks ago and another on Tuesday of this week. The report was that the group put together a proposal to fine-tune fair adjustments that will set the stage for recommendations to come through the process, as I know that that is a pressing matter, that along with other issues. The minister adds that instead of fare increases being done in an ad hoc manner, he has asked that a timeline for reviews be done. The burning issue of a fare increase is going to be finally dealt with in terms of how it is handled, which means coming up with the formula that will dictate what is the reason for the need for a fare increase. The PPV steering committee was established on the recommendation of Minister Vaz following a transport authority conference held earlier this year. It is chaired by Ralston Smith, managing director of the transport authority. And finally, 25 neonatal intensive care staff employed to the Southeast Regional Health Authority, Sarah, have received advanced training to boost the management of respiratory illness in newborns and infants requiring advanced care. The training included advanced theoretical and hands-on neonatal respiratory ventilation therapies. It was conducted by a team of professionals, including senior respiratory therapists and biomedical engineering staff from Medical Link and Medtronic. This advanced training supports the recent acquisition of five PB980 ventilators for the Victoria Jubilee Hospital, which were procured by the Southeast Regional Health Authority. Sarah's Regional Director Errol Green says the training will help the staff assigned to the high dependency units at Victoria Jubilee, the Bustamante Hospital for Children and Spanish Town Hospital appropriately diagnose and manage both common and rare neonatal respiratory conditions. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.